Hi everyone, my name is Neil Smith. I'm doing cartoons and caricatures for the East Kilbride Arts Centre. So this is week two, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at drawing a picture of Harry Styles. Harry Styles is famous for being in the One Direction, but now he's got a solo career and he's got a song called Watermelon Sugar. I don't know if that's the right title, but that's what uh, the famous lyric is. Uh, so it's a quick recap on last week. I talked about head shapes, and this week I'm going to talk about hairstyles before we actually start drawing. So last week when we were talking about head shapes, we talked about how it was quite important to look at the overall shape of the face first before we start drawing. And it's the same when it comes to looking at uh, the hairstyle. Hairstyle can be quite distinctive. So I'm going to draw a couple of examples and let you see uh, what I'm talking about. So first of all, you might recognize some of these hairstyles. This one, first of all. So the big long hair, and then we draw the two circles. So that looks quite reminiscent to John Lennon. And next one, we'll do another one. So this hairstyle. Now, just looking at the iconic and almost like a logo, um, so this one I would say would be Adolf Hitler. So, do another one. So, this person's obviously got curly hair. And then what we do, is we do the big, big lips, so that's Tina Turner. So what we're doing is we're just capturing a likeness just with a couple of lines. Uh, another one which might be quite recognisable. So this chap's got a big quiff. But then what we've got is, we've got the big S on his forehead. So that's Superman. So, just giving you a quick idea of the things to look at when you're starting off your picture. I like to look at the big shapes, the bigger shapes and bigger shapes are one of the bigger shapes as your hairstyle. So, we'll leave it there. Right, okay, so, let's draw Harry style. So, we'll do his face first of all. So, just do a quick outline. Then we're going to draw Harry styles and we're looking at the shape of his face. It's quite similar to the, the peach. So he's got quite a wide bottom, quite a sort of chis chiseled chin, coming right round. And don't worry if your lines aren't 100% straight away. Re remember what we're talking about. These are your guidelines. I can always alter them. I'm going to take that line out a wee bit further, actually. Just... They're a wee bit darker than what I would normally do, but it's just obviously for the camera to let you see what's happening. So there's his face, first of all. Just finding the lines. Just look at... I, I'm at, I'm at a, I am at an angle. So what I want to do is just want to sort of see it face on, so I'm not getting any foreshortening. If anybody wants to know what foreshortening is, I'll just give you a quick rundown. If you're looking at a picture from side on, you'll get the perspective happening. So everything that's closer to you, you'll draw a wee bit bigger. And then everything that's further away, you'll maybe do a wee bit smaller. So when you look at it face on, it might be a wee bit off your picture, so it's always best to be straight on, and that's why I'm using the drawing board. So that's the shape of his face. We'll stop there. Now that we've drawn the face, I've still got all my guidelines in. What I want to do is, I talked about hair this morning, um, so what we'll do is we'll look at uh, Harry's hair. Quite a full hair buffon that he's got, so let's get started. So it's all that stuff. Uh, a quiff almost, so just nice continuous lines. 
I talked about obviously how to hold your pencil in the last session, but you can see the way that I'm drawing. I'm holding the pencil quite loose so that I get a nice free movement. That's always the same when you're doing your sketches. Always use the end of the pencil or always hold the pencil by the end. You get that nice flowing arc. Nice big buffoon, as I was saying. Now, what we'll do is we'll divide up the, the face. I was talking about proportions last week as well. So we were talking about the level for the eye, the level for the nose and the level for the mouth. So what I want to do is I want to emphasize this big sort of chiseled chin that uh, Harry's got and obviously the, the nose and the, the eyes. So let's start off with just marking in some of these lines. So the level for his eyes, the level for his nose, usually half, way down the face would be where you would position the eyes, but it's a wee bit higher in this case. And then the nose would be halfway between the eyes and the chin. So it would normally be about here, but I'm actually going to put his nose about here. He's got quite a small nose and his mouth bringing up a wee bit higher as well. So if you think about, about a plumb line right the way through, the centre of the, his face, you can actually start to sort of see the face appear already uh, just by putting in these markers. And the next step, we'll put in some of the put in some of the detail with the shapes of the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Let's draw his eyebrows. It's a James Bond style: one eyebrow going down and then another eyebrow going up, just to make it a wee bit quirky. And then what we'll do is we'll do the shape of his eyes. Slightly slope down at the sides. These pupil. And then some of the crease lines. You always have a crease line underneath the eye for the lower eyelid. And then a crease line up at the top for the upper eyelid and then you can play with that you can see a lot of people have different different shapes of eyes so we'll talk about that in um, we talk about the eyes in week three so we'll talk talking about that in a wee bit more detail so that's us done our eyes and the eyebrows so we've done the eyes. The next thing is we'll draw the nose. So just almost like a reverse question mark. See if I turn it upside down, you'll see what I mean. Always look at shapes that you're familiar with when you're breaking down the face. Try and make it easier for yourself, but see if you can zoom in, you'll be able to sort of see this question mark begin to appear. So that's his nose. Now we'll do his nostrils. So the wee commas inside. That's his nose. And then we'll do his creases at each side of his mouth. Let's show his ears, eh? So. We cucumber shape at the side of his face. Do one at the same level. So I've just done it just below the eyes. That same shape. And then what we'll do is we'll draw his mouth. So have a wee bit of fun with the shape of the mouth. Just a wee bit of exaggeration. She's got fuller lips. 
don't think he's been for Botox, but he des definitely does have fuller lips, so let's get the line of his upper lip first of all. And then again, as I was saying about familiar shapes, the two, the twin peaks for his upper lip. And then we'll do his mouth. And his lower lip again. Remember I was saying it's a bit fuller, so let's make that lower lip a wee bit fuller. Just pause for a wee second and then we'll just check and see how we're progressing, just to look at it straight on. Yep, quite happy with that one. So let's get the cheeks. Quite high cheekbones, so let's just bring in the line for his cheekbones. We do dimples. And if you want to adjust your lines to anything while you're here, just go for it. Let your picture evolve. Some lines at the side of his temples. Right, so the next thing is I'm going to put in his melons chomping on these melons. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a big bite out of this one here. This is one thing that you, it's really important when you're doing your pictures and when you're doing your commissions for people. Um, you get a wee bit of information about them. Um, and the reason that's important because it helps make the picture a bit unique. So I had reference to a song Watermelon sugar. So, you okay, David? So, just draw in the watermelon, bring in the seeds. Getting all that detail before we actually start putting in the line work. Get his wee thin neck, wee scrawny neck. You may have heard the term bubble heads. So what you do is, when you're doing a cartoon or a caricature, you'll do a big bubble head and then a wee tiny body. So start that wee tiny body off with a wee scrawny neck. Do his shirt collar. Now the reference photograph, he had a big open neck shut, but you don't have to capture all the detail. You adjust the picture to what you want. Right, let's draw the next watermelon. So again, remember it's the bigger shapes. Just find your lines. Sketch the detail. I think we'll have them chomping in this one as well. He's a greedy Harry, this one. So what you'll do is, you, you generally do your first sketch, and this is really what we could say that I've done here. The first sketch is the one to the right-hand side, and we can add detail, we could add more information if we want. So that's the two melons done add more detail into the body. So we want to get his right shoulder in. And we'll maybe try and get his left shoulder in as well. 
so we get some of the pattern that's in this shirt in the picture as well. Some of the creases in his shirt. Now, let's start drawing these fingers. So he's holding these what, watermelons. And we're seeing his fingers. And his thumb there. So we're not really seeing the full hand. We're just seeing his fingers. The same with the, the right hand. I'll hold this up in a wee second just so you can see because this is right down at the bottom. So. There we go. So that's me done the guidelines for his fingers, so let's just add in the detail. What I do a lot when I'm out, I might even just look at my own hands and then just sort of use them as reference as well. So there's all these wee creases in your fingers. Just take your time at this stage because this is you creating your roadmap for when you want to go in with the watercolour. Right, so the side of his body. His arm coming down there. We're not really seeing his left arm, but we can see a wee bit more of his right arm there. Um, right, obviously chomping down on his watermelon. Let's get some of the splashes of the juicy watermelon coming out his mouth. One of my favourite fruits. Very refreshing in the summer. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put some sugar cubes. Now, remember it's a cartoon, so it doesn't need to be true to life. So obviously these sugar cubes are quite large. Do them in the back. Just injecting a wee bit more humour into the piece. So starting off with a square and then creating the cube. In fact, you know what we'll do as well? We'll put wee faces on these. They're the backing singers. So just let your imagination run. Have fun with your piece. And then we could actually maybe even I'm adding more detail than what's in the actual sketch. So we could have the sun are we up in the sky? Do some of the sun rays coming down. And just have a wee quick look at your picture just to sort of see how it's coming together. I'm liking that, so we'll stop there. So I'm redrawing it, folks, because I drew it on lightweight paper, which isn't ideal. So let's just quickly do the sketch again onto the watercolour paper. Now you'll be supplied with watercolour paper.
I think I'll make his face a wee bit longer. So just keep adjusting to suit your image and the space. So you can see I'm pretty much following the same process uh, in the first image, but obviously the pace is a lot quicker. But again, please take your time. Just making sure that you're getting everything nice and sharp. Question mark for his nose. Side of his mouth. His cheekbones. Not to keep me the shape of that chin there. So just keep adjusting it, nothing set in stone. His face is maybe, no, it's fine. I was gonna say it was a wee bit too wide, but it's okay. Let's just get the lips. There is another way that you could do this as well. What you could do is you could get carbon paper and then you can get an exact copy with your carbon paper. But we're just doing this freehand. Right. So the watermelon's next. Again, using the pencil quite loose. Bite mark. Shoulder. Hand. Sorry, his right hand this time. His fingernails. Just building it up, folks. I'm going to make his fingers a wee bit longer. Put the seeds in for the watermelon. And then do these with sugar cubes.
putting wee faces on his sugar cubes. And then we'll do the sun. Steal back some of that space from the right hand side of his face. And so we've got some enough room for his, his sun. Be facing the sun. And then the sun rays. And then that's us cut up. hill in the background and then we'll do some of the wee figures there. Just wee stick men. That's all the other members of the band. There we go. That's us. So the next stage, folks, is just really just going in over all the lines and then making them a lot sharper with a sharpie. So now the next stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in all over the pencil marks with the sharpie fine point marker. Uh, make sure that your pens are waterproof because when it comes to these and the watercolors, you don't want the, the lines bleeding. So um, sharpies are great because they don't bleed. So let's just get started. So. Go over all your lines and with a wee bit of detail as well. Make his eyebrows a wee bit fuller. It's almost like a vector drawn. We talked about programs that I use in my illustration. So Vector drawings are just really line work. It's big buffon. The only reason I can do this with the pen just once I continue moving is because I've got all my guidelines underneath. It looks quite impressive, I suppose, because you're thinking, well, that's great that you're doing that all sort of freehand, but it's actually, it's just following the lines that are underneath. Some crease marks on his shirt. We'll start on his shirt. So we screw on the neck. He's wee Adam's apple. Big bite out his watermelon. So I'm deliberately leaving some of the lines off for my final pen. So I wouldn't go over all these lines with this fine line sharpie. Generally what I do is I keep the, the background with a final line pen. Go back 
can do a bit more detail in his face. Play with the lines and the shapes of the mouth. detail in the watermelon and we'll go on to the smaller pen we'll just continue and leave more detail a bit of fluff this top lip back in and then putting the, his left ear in there. Right, and then we'll start working in more of the, the background, so let's get these wee sugar cubes in. Actually, I'm going to draw the sugar cubes first with a small pen and then I'm going to draw the wee faces with a bigger pen so I'll go back to that in a wee second. Just pause for a wee second so you can see the progress.
enjoy the whole process of creating your piece and spend as much time as you, you can or you want on this stage because this is quite important this stage so the time you spend on this creating your roadmap later this will make your final illustration much better you stick me First of all, the sun. There we go, folks. That says. So that's me, I've done all my line work and next stage is just to actually start rubbing out all the pencil marks. So just take your time, make the picture nice and clean before we go on and start using the watercolours. Just start to see the picture really coming alive now. There we go, what a difference, eh? Taking out all those sketched lines. That's us. So now we're ready just to start using the paint. So first of all, the main area is obviously his face. So I'll start with his face. So wet on wet, I talked about that last week. So I'm just going to wet all the area in the face before I add any colour. And the reason for that is it just helps with your first wash flow through the whole picture. So. It's almost like just painting with the the water. Leave some areas dry because it has some interest with your wash. Talked about how the paint won't float from the wet to the dry, so you're creating a what they call a mask. In this case, it's a a natural mask. Still a wee bit of the pencil marks down at the bottom here at the hand, but as long as the main part of the picture's completely clean. Sometimes the pencil marks, not if there's not too much, sometimes it creates a wee bit of interest in the picture because it lets people see how the picture came together. Now, talk about the paint quickly. Um, so I'm using watercolours 
I'm, I'm using a flesh tint and last week I talked about how we can create a flesh tint from red, yellow and white but I'm quite fortunate that I've got a colour already in my, my wee tray. You should have one actually when you get your, your sets. So let's just start putting in that initial wash. It's quite dry, it's drying quite quick in the heat in the room so just add a wee bit more moisture. I've got the sketch angled at probably about sort of maybe 20 degrees so it helps the colour flow down. Now at this stage of percentage of paint to water, probably about 20% paint and then 80% water. But you can vary the intensity of the colour, add more pigment, add more paint. You can see that I'm actually doing that just now, I'm adding more paint into the top part. Going down, thinking about where the light source is, so where it's darker, adding more pigment, where it's lighter, less, of course. So, bringing that right down, you can see some of the areas where I'm leaving exposed, the paper exposed, just to create a wee bit more of an artistic effect, making it a bit more expressive. So. Spotting the colour, what I'm doing is just going back in with more pigment, more paint and then just spotting the colour. These hands. Now if you dry your brush, what you can lift, what you can do is you can lift off the excess moisture. So it doesn't pull down at the bottom of your wash. So just picking it up, the paintbrush will suck up all the extra moisture. See the way that I'm holding the brush as well. I'm holding the brush quite loose, almost the same way as my pencil, because at this stage there's not much fine line painting as such, it's just creating the washes. So that's me done my first wash for the the face. It's beginning to encroach into the, the eyes. So just suck that up there. That's us. There we go. Now let's get my, my brown and just start to spot that in. Add a wee bit of moisture so that floods a wee bit better. If you just watch that, just flowing down. What's actually happening is that the the paint's blending itself, just tidying it up a wee bit. So sometimes you hear the expression "happy accents." Well, when you're coming to do watercolor painting, the less control sometimes creates a better effect. Enjoy your painting process as well. I'm going to add in a wee bit there. 
panes grey as well. Make it a wee bit darker. Now let's go into his hair. What I'm going to do is, I don't want the, the wash to flood into my face, so I'm going to use wet on dry. Because I do have a wee bit more control when I'm doing the wet on dry. But still trying to keep some of that sort of white spacing. Mix the colour on the canvas as well, or in this case the watercolour paper. Be a bit more pigment needed I think, so just keep on getting some of that paint from your palette onto the, the paper. Great thing about dry brushing is you get that sort of speckled effect and I was seeing how you can use that in your your landscapes to get that sort of nice sparkle on the top of the water. Still need to get a lot more paint, let's just because it's too similar to the fit colour of the face. I think I'm gonna get some more paint out of the tubes folks so Probably about, in this case, 60% paint and then 40% water. And you can see already, it's a lot stronger the pigment, isn't it? So, make his hair a lot darker. Get a wee bit of the pain's grey as well. Tend not to use up black in your watercolours. Pain's grey is a sort of substitute. There we go. You can see already the picture's not exactly the same as the original. Reconfigured the lines a wee bit. as well the sides. Now let's get some red for these watermelon. adding the colours. Just a wee few expressive marks. I quite like doing that in my watercolour pictures. Bring in the green.
Music, we need to lead play it. So, Cobalt Blue. And we'll do some of the sugar cubes. much colour because what we're doing is we're actually using a really light wash with the blue and when it's a light wash what happens the white of the paper creates the mix just lifting that back out So just lift with your brush. That's quite nice, that red in there. So let's just put a wee bit of red in. And then do the rest of the sugar cubes. Again, that's just a wee bit strong, but just dry brush, lifting off some of the excess colour. The brush is just acting like a wee sponge. You'll notice that I've left the lips. The reason that I've done that is I'll go back because I want the, the picture to rest a wee while and then we'll sort of get the lips once it's a wee bit more dry. Well, let's get the, the hill in the distance. Again, using the dry brush, just your first quick wash. Some yellow, more yellow. moving that colour, pulling it across, adding more moisture when I want to pull it. Let's get a wee bit of red. Do his lips so that flesh tint with a wee bit of brown. Just more lip. It's quite obvious as technique. You can see that I'm just moving the colour around the areas that I've created with the markers. So just really sort of filling in the areas. We splashes of colour from the, wa the watermelon. So this is us at the sort of final stages now. Starting to sort of really work in the detail. Start to go back in over your first initial wash.
Let's have a look at his face. I think it needs a bit more definition, so. Just making the shadows a lot darker. Pull that colour across. Let's just work in a wee bit more detail on the hair. See how dark that is? Again, don't panic. Because what you can do is just add a wee bit more water. And then what you do is you just lift, lift it off. With your brush. different marks help create a more natural effect, a more interesting effect. Putting a wee bit of green in his face there. A reflective highlight from the melons makes it a wee bit more interesting. Right, I think we should do these top dark blue. Look how light those fingers are compared to when we put that first initial wash on. It's a lot lighter the hand, isn't it, compared to when we put that colour the shirt in there. I think we'll add a wee bit of purple. Oh, I do like the purple. That's nice. Of 
quite close to the picture, folks. I've just been sort of, just been painting and been quite close. What you're always better doing is actually standing back from your piece and then just getting an overall impression. So at the end, I will stand back and then just check and make sure everything's okay. Just want to make these darker areas pop out a wee bit more. Popping out, you've heard, probably hear me saying that quite a lot. Just mean things that sort of stand out more. do is we should just have a wee bit of gold coming in on the left on his left hand side so just going over with that remember when we were doing the sugar cubes we had a really light blue wash so I'm just going in just putting a light blue wash just to cool that flesh tint because it is nice using the flesh tint but actually, it might just be a wee bit too strong, so just toning it down a wee bit. See how that ran down there? Again, sometimes just let it do its thing. But what you can do is you can go in and correct it. So what I'm doing is I'm just correcting some of those marks. Happy accidents are nice, but sometimes you want to just keep the control. So this bit here, so what we'll do is we'll just suck it up. Quite different from the original, but we had a wee bit more time to play with it, so that's us nearly there. I'm going to put a wee bit more red in the sun. Certainly a bit more impactful, I think. all running down here, see that? So let's just suck up some of that excess moisture with a brush. Filtering out. red a wee bit darker and that's pretty much us folks so there we go stop so just a wee quick recap folks and explain how the picture developed so we started off with just the pencil sketch once we'd done the pencil sketch we then went in with the markers uh, make sure that you use waterproof markers I must emphasize that because if you use uh, any others, it will just start bleeding and you don't want that when you come in to do your washes. Um, still a wee bit wet, um, so you can sort of probably see that when we're recording just now. It will dry quite nice and it will dry quite flat as well. The sort of follicling and buckling in the paper, that will sort of get reduced as well. Uh, a lot more intense than the original. Um, I think I quite like this one better because the peach colour that I was using in the original one it's quite intense, so it's maybe a more natural sort of feel to the face and more ex expression as well. So you see how I built that up just with the initial wash and then building and adding more colours. So you've even got the green coming in at the side of the face and that's quite nice to bring in. So that's what you call a reflective highlight. So it's taking the colour, the intense colour from the peach and bringing it in to the face because you'll get that sort of reflection in the face. Um, using all the different techniques, the wet on wet, the dry brushing and what you could do for the next stage is, I wouldn't 
I would maybe take that a wee bit further, adding a wee bit more detail, certainly in the sort of main area of the face, the eyes, the mouth, and the nose. So, but for just now, we'll leave it there, and we'll get on to week three. Thank you.